Being a freelancer can be tough, particularly when you first start and you're just beginning your career. There's so many different elements that make it more difficult as freelancers because we don't have the steady paychecks. So in today's special episode of Bring Your Worth, we're talking about three dimensions that will help you get your money together as a freelancer, particularly if you're first starting. We're gonna talk about how to survive a drought, we're going to talk about how to manage your money when you get those financial windfalls. And if you're a freelancer, you will. And lastly, how to build up passive income and dispel some of the myths that are around it. Now, these pillars are very, very simple. and They've actually been the cornerstone of me having a long career myself. And hopefully it'll help you get to the next level. When you're done watching this, check out the money playlist that we have over at Bring Your Worth so that you're better prepared for having a career next week, next month, next year, and into the next decade will be droughts as much as there's feast. Your main thing that you can control is how you show up. One of the toughest things when it comes to freelancing, doing any independent work, even doing your own startups or being a founder is when things get tough, particularly when there's a drought. It happens, it's part of the cycle. You might not have done anything quote unquote wrong. It's just the way that things work, particularly in economic climates, which is a more macro scale. And then even with stuff going on with your clients and they might be having their own financial troubles and that affects you. So there's different ways that you can actually get through a drought, getting through these cycles of feast and famine. My name is Damon Brown. This is uh, the Bring Your Worst Show. I come to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. Feel free to subscribe. So one, as far as getting through a drought, you wanna keep your relationships fresh. This is something that works no matter what, is you staying connected to the people that you serve. They're often the people that actually get you paid. We sometimes will only do those connections or do the groundwork, do the networking when we're in a drought. That's not the right approach. The right approach is to continue to keep those relationships connected, even when you're busy, even when it's feast, even when it's famine. Because sometimes we'll get into this crisis situation and then we'll start hitting people up, check our email, check our text, check our social media DMs and realize they reached out to us five, 10, 20 months ago, weeks ago, whatever, and we didn't even get back to them because things were fine back then. But now that things are in a drought, we wanna to talk to them. That's not the dynamic you wanna create. If you wanna be a freelancer, if you wanna be an independent creator, if you wanna own a business in the long term, you have to go after what Simon Sinek calls the infinite game. It's not a matter of winning today, but about building relationships so that you two can win forever. When you're working with a client, they have their particular needs. So it's not a matter of you coming to them whenever you need some money. It's a matter of you staying connected with them because they might need a whole bunch of work and you might be busy but then suddenly you're not busy and they're not interested in hearing about what work you need now. When you're in these feast positions, when you have a lot of stuff coming in and you're overworked, this is actually one of those good times to actually refer that client to one of your colleagues or friends who you think will do a good job with it. You're building trust, you're taking care of your client, of course you're taking care of your friend, but also you're taking care of yourself because they're gonna remember when you hit that drought period, how you took care of them, even though you were extremely busy. The second thing is to build a side hustle or to build passive income. The first one is way easier than the second one, but we'll get into that. Building a side hustle comes down to one simple question. What do people keep asking you for? I have several videos on this. I'll be sure and throw up a link. In fact, there's one particular video about how to find your side hustle. That's really a good place to start. With my own side hustle journey, if you looked at my LinkedIn page or you're familiar with my work, you know I've had a ton of side hustles. There's so many things that I've created while I was having one main thing take care of my main income. One of those things that actually I'm known for that began as a side hustle is being a business coach. As I talk about in my books, most recently Career Remix, one of the things I talk about in the book and in the previous books is that I wasn't planning on being a business coach, but I had my first major bestseller, The Bites as Entrepreneur, which came out about five, six years ago now. And it was super popular. I went on the road. It was fantastic. I was connecting with people from uh, here in the States to over in Bogota to later on, uh, which is Bogota, Colombia, and then so many other places around the globe. I was able to have these conversations. I loved connecting with y'all. And one of the things that kept happening as y'all came to my events and started coming to my speaking gigs is you kept asking for more time. Can we get a cup of coffee? Um, do you have a little bit of time after the Q&A? 
And I was totally confused because I'm like, well, I just did a 45 minute presentation, you know, and I just had a, an hour long Q&A, but you want to talk one on one? And then someone flat out asked, do you do business coaching? And a light bulb went off. And I think it wasn't that time, but maybe the time after that, I said, yes, that's how I got into it. Now it's a major part of my income and a big part of, frankly, my career and my identity. That income source did not exist six, seven years ago. It literally didn't exist. It was not on the roadmap. So when you're in a drought, it's a great opportunity for you to make the time to build those side hustle skills, especially when you're not in a drought. It's even better. One of the things that helps when you are in a drought is building passive income. I have a whole playlist dedicated to it. Be sure and check it out. Any of the videos will help you get started. I have about 50, 52 or so passive income streams. They come from my books, my online courses, from affiliates. Those are opportunities that come in every month, every week, in some cases every day, depending on the season. That's called an uncorrelated asset. The market or this particular thing, area, could be doing something. And then you have something uncorrelated over here that's doing totally something else. Now, sometimes there are gonna be perfect storms where both of those things are not working out. The passive income's running low and the main income, the day jobs or whatever, are running low. But the more you separate those things, the lower the chance of those things happening. We're talking about odds. We're not talking about perfection. You are going to have droughts. That's the way it works if you do anything independent. That's the name of the game. It could be macro things. It could be things that are happening locally to your market or to your company. But either way, you're gonna be dealing with droughts. Our thing is to mitigate that risk. Number three, you wanna keep level. Keep level. This is for the good times and the so-called bad times. What happens when the drought happens, and you might be going through this right now, is that you start getting desperate. And in getting desperate, you might be thinking about bending your ethics or doing things that are questionable. And I've had those drought moments where I was thinking about not robbing a bank, <laughs> but asking for things, doing things, pushing things further than I normally would have based on the ethics that I have. It's a tough place. You've got my sympathy and my empathy. I know what you're going through. The thing is, is that this too will pass. So if you're focused on having a short-term career, your uh, startup, freelance career, independent creating, and you only wanna be in the game for a few months, that's, that's your call. But if you wanna be in the game years, decades, as I have, this is the stuff you wanna do for the rest of your life, then things are gonna turn around. Whatever decisions you made ethically, while you're in that desperate situation, those decisions are part of your record. They're part of your being, they're part of how you're connecting with your audience. Those ethics, while we're in our drought, will be tested. It's no doubt about it. It becomes a question of what kind of business are you running? If you're able to maintain your ethics, knock on wood as I have, then once you get out of that drought, then your business will still reflect who you are. You wanna show up the same way whether your bank account has a negative balance or whether you have more money than you know what to do with. That builds trust. That trust actually brings in more money and more ways for you to serve the people that you're serving. The infinite game. Whatever drought you're going through, it will likely end. Whether it's you ending your business and, and pivoting to something else or you getting out of the drought and suddenly your customers start to come through with the financial support that you need to keep doing what you're doing. Either way, it's gonna stop. Your main thing should be keeping yourself level as you go through this transformation. Because to be honest, there will be droughts as much as there's feast. Your main thing that you can control is how you show up. We're all sharing ramen noodles and then suddenly you become a millionaire. There's a lot to unpack with that. All right, so your biggest client so far came through, you signed the contract, you negotiated the deal, and the money hits your account. Woo! There's nothing like that feeling. I've been independent for two decades plus. I still get chills whenever I get a new opportunity. 
Now what? Because if you've been going through a drought, you're kind of living from hand to mouth, then suddenly you have all this money coming in. There's so many people that I work with as a business coach who aren't sure what to do when it comes in. In fact, they're afraid to look at their bank account because they, they're frozen. They don't know what to do next. So here's what you can do once those windfalls hit. I'm Damon Brown of DamonBrown.net. You're watching the Bring Your Worst show. I come to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. And my main thing is helping you as a side hustler, as a solopreneur, or otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. The first thing you wanna do, taxes, taxes, taxes. Did I say taxes? Taxes. If it's a lot of money, you might wanna get a financial advisor because the amount of money it costs for a financial advisor, even if it's an ad hoc thing or a lawyer that might help you with the finances, that's nothing compared to the amount of pain that comes when you get a call from the IRS or whatever your equivalent is where you live. Number two, remember it is a windfall. This is not your salary. If you're independent like me, you get these big checks and sometimes that'll be the check that you get that you'll be hanging on to for a little while. I've gotten major checks and then haven't gotten another check for like six, seven, eight, nine months. Did I mention I have a family, a young family? <laughs> and I have a partner, I have a wife, and I have a mortgage? There's things that will regularly be taken care of that are on a monthly, weekly basis, depending on your lifestyle. Whatever windfall you get, it makes sense to spread it out. Maybe it's over the course of a year. Maybe it's over the course of five years. If it's a lot of money, maybe it's over the course of the next 10 years. Again, I am not a financial advisor, but I, what I would recommend is breaking that down and finding out how much money do you actually need. Number three, invest in systems. If you're familiar with my work, my latest book, Career Remix, even with some of the stuff on the channel, you know I'm really into systems. Systems matter because you don't need to think about them. They're kind of like passive income. How passive income, the money just comes in, it's not active, you don't have to chase it. Systems are the same way. If you have a system in place, then you can just focus on the big picture things and just showing up. It also shields you from chaos. Chaos, in this case, I'm talking about is financially. It also is the time to invest in those systems that will actually make your business better. For instance, I have a website over at DamonBrown.net. I host it currently on strikingly.com, strikingly.com. I'll be sure and put a link down below. Whenever I have major money coming in, I will pay it for one year, two year. They even give the option of paying five years in advance. I don't have to worry about that. Not only from a financial standpoint, but psychologically. It gives me the brain space to be like, great, my website's set until 2030. I'm good. I don't need to think about it. What you don't want is to have that financial windfall, not to invest into those systems, and then to suddenly have a drought. You also, number four, want to find someone you trust. Now, ideally you do this <laughs> before you have your windfall, <laughs> kind of like winning the lottery. You don't want to suddenly try to make friends when you're a billionaire or a millionaire. You want to on have an ongoing process and relationship with people that support you. Now, it could be a family member, whether it's a blood family or a chosen family. It could be someone that you know and respect or even some type of mentor who's been through this before. I have a whole roster of mentors. I always have, I've been fortunate about that, but that's an active process. So when I got my first major speaking engagement, I had 10 people that I called and said, how much should I charge for this? And how should I do this? And how do I set up my books in the background and all that stuff? That was my first, one of my first windfalls at that time. And I had people I could talk to that not only gives you guidance, but also almost like a therapist, it allows you to offload those things. We have so many things tied to money about guilt uh, as far as us having money and other people not having money, having shame as far as us not understanding if we deserve that money. If our work and we're not sure about our work, suddenly we're getting paid a lot for it, we can actually start to undo that goodwill, that fortune, that uh, stuff that we've earned because we don't believe it. We don't think we deserve to have a five-figure book deal beyond these particular stages to have our clients, you know, banging down our door for more of our product. And if those things don't match, it can become toxic. And you can actually start to undo that windfall 
through many different ways. One of the ways we can avoid this toxic behavior or at least tampen it a little bit is by talking to someone else. If we're all sharing ramen noodles and then suddenly you become a millionaire, there's a lot to unpack with that. Certain people in your social group might not go and get what you're going through, but even before you get to that point, you have to deal with how you feel about it. Since maybe being broke and being in a drought was part of your identity. I can identify with that. I know what you're going through. Talking to someone else is key, especially if there's someone that can help you on your journey because they've already been in your shoes before. Seek out that mentorship, ideally before you get that windfall you get to the next level if you want to get to the next level financially you gotta get out of that loop of time being traded for money because we can't make more time my name is damon brown damonbrown.net my main thing is helping you as a side hustler a solopreneur or otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur today we're going to talk about the four rules or four practices that will help you build good passive income now, I have a whole playlist talking about passive income and how we can create things and not have to work as hard and the idea of trading time for money, which we'll get into. But I think it's also important to set up guidelines as far as what passive income is and what it isn't. So some of y'all are asking, I wanna go ahead and break it down for you really quickly. Again, four basic ideas. My name is Damon Brown, DamonBrown.net. You're watching the Bring Your Worst show. It's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. If you like what you're hearing or you're into this kind of stuff, be sure to subscribe and share it with other people that you think might need to hear it. The number one rule when it comes to passive income is that it is not, it is not time traded for money. It's not time traded for money. If you have an hourly job, then you're making $5 an hour. You work for four hours, you're making 20 bucks. If you have a salary position and it's every other Friday you get paid, you get that prorated annual salary for those two weeks that you worked. Really straightforward, really simple. This is the traditional practice that we grow up with. Passive income is not like that. You can create something once and then get paid a little bit or get paid forever. That's what makes it so beautiful. In fact, I have one book in mind that I worked on several years ago. I spent a week working on it and I put in a couple hundred dollars to get the book done. That book was did well enough for me to pay my rent at the time in San Francisco. Obviously, it was not an hourly rate, and obviously it wasn't salaried. It was something I created, and it created passive income for years to come. I'm still making money based on that project. If we're going to get to the next level, if you want to get to the next level financially, you gotta get out of that loop of time being traded for money because we can't make more time. I talk about that in my book, Built From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance and Nourish the World. It's actually a quiz you can take to understand the, the finite resources that we all have. So over at builtfromnowquiz.com, I'll put the link below. But what we're working with, whether it's our focus, our agility, our time, and our energy, the things we talk about in Built From Now, we can't make more of that. That's not how it works. There's only 24 hours in a day, particularly if you're like myself. I have two little boys I'm taking care of. I have my partner, my wife that I'm working with. Like, like there's so much stuff going on. I can't make more time. But what I can do is maximize my time in creating something that's going to pay me forever. The number two rule when it comes to passive income is that it can continue in some form without you. Without you, it just keeps going. As I'm speaking to you, I have about a 50 or so passive income streams. And so those things are continuing to sell, whether I'm talking with you and doing the show, I'm spending time with my kids, I'm on the road, I'm resting, I'm sleeping. I did a book a, a few years ago with Jeanette Hurd called The Passive Writer, Five Ways to Make Money in Your Sleep. It's focused obviously on writing, but it talks about a lot of these principles as far as making money as you sleep. The key thing here is that it continues in some form without you. So if you're doing something else, if you have your day job, which is maybe the main thing that's paying the bills for you, even frankly, when you pass away, those things that you create, if they're true passive income streams, will continue. If I were to go right now, <laughs> and I don't mean metaphorically, my books will continue to sell and those royalties will go into my trust as well as to my family. That's passive income. It's way more passive than having a regular day job that gives me an hourly 
or an annual salary rate. Because once I'm gone, that salary is done. Number three, passive income requires an upfront investment. Passive income requires an upfront investment. If someone says it does not, do not believe them and run. That upfront investment could be your time. We call it sweat equity, right? Where you're working on something, you're building something, and then you hope that it gives you some type of return on investment, ROI later. That's part of the risk. That's why a lot of people don't mess with passive income because they want the guaranteed hourly rate or, or annual salary, which is okay. I'm not mad at them for that. But if you wanna get out of this situation or area that you're in and elevate to the next level, particularly financially, you're going to have to put something up front. That upfront could be time. That upfront could be uh, other resources like money. For instance, to get meta for a second, when I started this show a couple years ago, I was pretty much on my own and I didn't have any backing. I'm like, this is the direction that my audience, you, wants me to go in, so I'm gonna rock with it, particularly when the pandemic was first starting off and all of us were sheltering into place. For me to do this show, it required me doing a lot of research as far as other people who were doing the video series, me connecting and having phone calls with people who had had successful podcasts, but also the financial investment of having the lights, the mic down here, uh, make sure my computer was up for it, uh, getting sure, making sure that, uh, <laughs> you know, that my art was correct. Shout out to, to James and shout out to John. That required financial investment. I actually did a video recently, a live series. I do a live show every Wednesday. And I talked about how I was able to do the, all the inside baseball to get this show up and running. And it ran around $300. So I'll be sure and put a link up there and check that video out as well if you're looking or interested in the inside baseball as far as how I got this off the ground and now just hitting about 250 episodes. The point is, is that if you're gonna do passive income, it requires some type of investment up front. It's not gonna be free. It's not, that's not how it works. But then that leads to number four, which is as far as the results of passive income, there is no cap to it, no cap. In other words, you can create something and it's, it takes maybe a couple days, maybe a couple weeks for you to make it. And then it could give you $10, it could give you $100 and give you thousands of dollars. As I mentioned before, there are projects that I worked on and they're helping pay the mortgage now. And they were done years, decades ago. And they're still bringing in royalties, a, AKA passive income. So there's no cap to what you can do. The challenge with trading time for money is that there's an automatic cap. Not just based on what you negotiate, but literally how much time do you have in the day? You can put in that overtime, but if you're doing 12 hour days, it's not like you can do 16. And you probably shouldn't do 24 hour days <laughs> of working, right? And if you go too far, you end up burning yourself out. Passive income is an avenue for you to build more wealth without burning yourself out. There's absolutely risk involved. That's why I wanna go over these four, these four pointers. The key thing is, is understand how much risk you can handle and to understand that the benefits, with no cap, the benefits are way higher. The fifth point, goes way deeper than this. If you wanna find out where your best resources are and what your next move should be as far as with passive income, as far as getting your hands dirty, because you actually need to figure out what your passive income is gonna be before you actually start getting passive income, be sure and check out my playlist. I have about 15 or so videos that talk about this. Be sure and go deeper so you can get started on your passive income today.